Sorry, Hugh, would you mind going? I'm missing an order of service. I don't know where it went to. Oh, I'll maybe borrow yours and then if you. Sorry, sorry about that, Hugh. <laughs> sorry. We gather together for worship this afternoon on this third Wednesday before Christmas Day. It is a very busy season of the year. As all of you know, I'm sure you're up to your neck in all kinds of activities of one kind or another, not least work. So amidst the frenzy of this Christmas season, it's good to find time to be still and reflect on the meaning of Christmas. So let us do that now as we come before God to worship Him. Eternal God, ruler over space and time, Lord of history, before all, in all, and beyond all, we worship and acknowledge You, recognizing afresh all Your amazing love for us. So we come to adore You in our worship today. Amen. We come now to the lighting of the Advent candle, which as you will see from the front of your order of service, and you'll hear later in the message, the theme today is joy, and we light the pink candle. O oh God, we see ourselves and our own attitudes lived out by the people who featured prominently in the Christmas story. There was the innkeeper who couldn't find room for your son in his inn. O oh God, help us to cease from cluttering our lives with countless things that really don't matter, things that crowd you out. There was Herod, who was hostile, jealous, and hating, because he was afraid of what the coming of Jesus might do to him. Oh God, help us to see the destructiveness of our jealousies, and help us to replace our fears with hope and our hates with forgiveness. There were the shepherds who were scorned by others as unskilled laborers, but heard the music of the coming of Jesus even while they worked. O oh God, deliver us from the pride that thinks some tasks are too menial, and from prejudices that blind us to Your glory. There were the wise men from the East who journeyed far to find Jesus. Teach us again, eternal God, that those who really seek will find, 
and never let us rest content until we have been found by you. We ask this through the name of Jesus, the one who came. Amen. Friends, we are welcomed back, back into God's presence, to God's peace. Know that your sins are forgiven, and live into that grace that makes that possible. Thanks be to God. We affirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As far as announcements are concerned, there are very few. Please do take your weekly bulletin and uh, read through the various uh, notices. You may find uh, some of the activities around or over the Christmas period of interest to you, certainly as far as our services are concerned. And our final lunchtime service for 2023 will be next Wednesday, obviously at the usual time. It will take the form of a carol, short carol service, and at the end of the carol service we're going to wait behind, hopefully, for some light refreshments. Don't depend on it for your lunch. It will supplement your lunch or complement your lunch, whatever the right word is. Uh, but do wait behind for a little bit of fellowship. It's something we look forward to every year, and it's a way in which we uh, do a couple of things. We celebrate our year together, as albeit a small congregation here at the lunchtime service, and also, even much more importantly, uh, we celebrate together uh, the significance of the season, obviously Christmas and marking the coming of Jesus into our world to show God's love for us. So please wait behind, uh, and we'll have some light refreshments down in the, what we call the Peace Memorial Nave. So bring a friend, come along yourself, enjoy the carol service, and the short get-together afterwards as well. Thank you. Our gospel reading this afternoon is from Luke chapter 3, verses 7 to 18. Hear the word of God. John said to the crowds coming out to be baptised by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, that out of these stones God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What should we do then? The crowd asked. John answered, Anyone who has two shirts should share with the one who has none, and anyone who has food should do the same. Even tax collectors came to be baptised. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. Then some soldiers asked him, and what should we do? He replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering if in their hearts 
if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptise you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He is winning like winning winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. On each of the four Wednesdays leading up to Christmas Day, we are lighting a a candle on our Advent wreath and thinking about the themes that they represent. You may remember, if you had been with us on the first Wednesday, we lit the candle of hope. That's the front right one, which is by this stage the, the smallest Hopefully that's not a symbol of hope failing. We will replace it with a larger one come Christmas Eve, maybe even next Sunday too. Well, then last Wednesday at our Advent communion service, we uh, lit the candle of peace. That's the one next to it on the front. Today, on the third Wednesday before Christmas, we light the candle of joy. And as you can see, it is pink. And that's not because in the shop where I bought the candles, they had run out of purple candles. It is deliberate. It is supposed to be pink or rose, as it's sometimes described, because that is a symbol of joy. So let's think just for a few moments about the theme of joy. I hope you are experiencing some joy this afternoon. And if you're not, I hope you will by the end of the service. I can remember many years ago now when I was in Sunday school singing a simple chorus that went like this. I'm not sure whether Aussies know this one or not. It goes as follows. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. Well, we children love to sing it, and we had such fun. I think the reason why we liked it so much was because we didn't sing. We shouted the the where, down in my heart, where, and we almost um, blew the, the roof off the hall where we were meeting. Joy. The Macquarie Dictionary defines joy as an emotion of keen or lively pleasure arising from present or expectant good, exultant satisfaction, great gladness, delight. I think we'd all agree that being joyful is a great feeling. We experience joy when a new grandchild arrives in the family, when we get a clean bill of health from the doctor, when the team we support wins a game, when we receive presents from family members and friends at Christmas time. The candle of joy reminds us of the joy that Mary felt when the angel Gabriel told her that a special child would be born to her. This child would save and deliver his people. The angels who announced to the shepherds that Jesus had been born told them this. Luke chapter 2 and verse 10. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, 
I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. We lit the pink candle a few moments ago as a reminder that Christ brings us the promise of a new life and that He brings true and everlasting joy to us. Now, we could develop that theme further, and that may be something we can do on another occasion. But for today, for the few moments left to us, I want us to think about a different kind of Christmas joy. It is the joy we find in sharing what we have with others. One of the things you find in most homes at Christmas time is a pile of presents lying under the Christmas tree. It starts off with only a few presents under the tree, but as the, the days go by and as Christmas Day gets ever closer, the pile of presents gets larger and larger. If you look at each present, you will see it has a name tag on it. I heard a story one time about a little boy who checked the presents under the tree every day leading up to Christmas Day. As he checked to see if any new presents had been added to the pile, he grouped the presents together according to the names on the name tags. Then, after he had carefully arranged them, he began to count the presents under each name. One day he discovered that his sister had more presents under the tree than he had. He became very upset and ran into the kitchen where his mother was preparing dinner. Katie has more gifts under the tree than I do, the little boy cried. Then he turned and ran from the room. He went to his bedroom, closed the door, and sat on his bed pouting. He couldn't enjoy the Christmas season because he was so upset that someone else, his sister in his case, had more gifts under the tree than he had. What this little boy did not understand, hopefully he learned later as he grew older, was that the real joy of Christmas is not in how many presents we receive, but in sharing what we have with others. <clears throat> in our reading today from Luke chapter 3, verses 7 to 19, we read about John the Baptist who was sent to prepare people for the coming of Jesus. He told them to repent of their sins and prepare their hearts for the coming of the promised Messiah. The crowd then asked a question. Verse 10, what should we do then? The crowd asked. John the Baptist answered them, verse 11, the man with two tunics should share with him who has none, and the one who has food should do the same. This is the message we need to hear today as we look forward to Christmas Day. If we want to experience the real joy that Jesus wants to give us, then we must learn to share what we have with other people, whether in our family circle or in our circle of friends or maybe even in the wider community. By sharing what God has so generously given to us, we will receive an even greater gift. And this gift is the gift of joy. I don't think you could put a money value on this incredible gift. I can remember my father-in-law 
teaching my kids a very important lesson around this. I used to tell them about this simple word joy, and he would say to them, the word joy consists of three letters. He would ask them what those letters were, and they would tell him. And then he would say, J-O-Y. Jesus first, others second, and yourself last. It's very simple, but it's very practical and very effective. I hope my kids, as they've grown up, remember that simple lesson from their granddad. I'm sure you've heard it before, but just in case you haven't, J-O-Y, Jesus first, others second, yourself last. Do keep it in mind. Christmas is a great time of joy for many people, but it is important for us to note in passing that it is not a time of great joy for everybody. There are some people in our society, and they don't any joy at this time of year. In fact, if anything, this time of year is even worse for them than any other. There are many people in our community, maybe even around this area, around Marnica, Kingston, so on, Pacific, who will not receive any presents this Christmas. I'm thinking here of the homeless people, and there sadly are many of those around our city. They will have very little, if any, money to spend. They will have very little food to eat. And one that really saddens me, they will have no one to spend Christmas Day with. I know a little bit about this kind of problem because I have the occasional visitor over here at St. Andrew's house. There are a few that I've built up a relationship with over the years that I've been here. They come and see me, and I do what I can. I'm limited, of course, as we all are, but I try to stretch my resources as widely as possible to give these people some help, even if that is to invite them to the, the lunch that we had in the grounds here uh, last Sunday morning after our Advent uh, All Aid service. These people have really nowhere to go on Christmas Day, and they have virtually nothing. Uh, my heart goes out to them. I, I just wish I could do more to help them. So, it is incumbent upon us who have so much to do what we can to share even a little of what we have with them. I can assure you that part of the joy of the Christmas season is bringing some joy to those who have none. The pink candle reminds us of the joy that is ours because God has entered our world in human form. So, you see, it's not about some kind of material sharing, although that obviously is part of it. But part of our sharing is also to be able to remind people of what this season really is about, that God has sent His Son Jesus to be a human being, to identify with us, and to show us His love. The angels heralded the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, and the one who was the King of Kings. And then remember those other kings who came from the east to worship Him. And they did that because they marveled at the wonder of what God had done for them. Well, we marvel that God has stepped into our world, which is broken and marred by… Now, we've got to be careful here. We might say, because of the sinful behavior of other people, the terrorists in the Middle East or Ukraine or wherever, well, let's be careful as we say that, because remember, 
God stepped into this broken, fragile world because of the sinful behavior of all of us. None of us is exempt. The knowledge that God is accomplishing something new or that He cannot be stopped or deterred brings us great comfort and, you've guessed, great joy, even as we still live in a world full of sorrow and pain. We look back with joy and wonder that God came into the world, and, and here I finish, we look forward to His second advent, expecting the great unceasing joy that He has promised us. So it is my prayer that we will all experience a joyful Christmas season. Amen. Lord, we pray for the communities in North Queensland who are facing the threat of Cyclone Jasper within the next 24 hours or so. We pray for those in Cooktown, Douglas and Cairns, who are getting up evacuation centers, who are setting up evacuation centers. We pray that the cyclone will not be as serious as predicted. The prediction is that it will be grade two, but we pray it will even be less than that. And we ask that people will be kept safe, that there will be no loss of life, and that damage to properties will be kept to a minimum. Lord, we pray for the family of the firefighter who died yesterday while responding to a house engulfed with flames in the northwest of Sydney. What a Christmas they're going to experience. So we ask that you will be very near and dear to them at this sad time in their lives. And we give thanks for the courage of that firefighter who in the end sacrificed his life for the safety of others. And Lord, we pray for those in our parish who are ill at this time. We think of Bernice Quillian and Elaine Kessel, that you will lay your special touch upon them this day. Lord, we pray for those who are grieving the passing of Yuland Hickey, who was our elder emeritus at Belconnen and played an important part in the life of our session here at St. Andrew's Pastoral Charge. We know that her family is very small. Indeed, her family really was the Belconnen congregation who are grieving much at this time. So comfort them and prepare them as they meet next Monday in the Belconnen church to give thanks for Yulin's life. Lord, we pray for the ringing of the bells Christmas outreach program here at St. Andrew's. We pray that there will be sufficient volunteers uh, to undertake the filling of the rosters each night, and we do ask that that will be a very fruitful ministry once again this year as it has been in the past. We pray that hundreds of families and kids will come through our doors and not just enjoy uh, ringing the bells, but also be able to participate in a number of our activities and hear the message of Christmas. And Lord, we pray today for Beth, our organist, and the choir during what is their busiest time of the year. We ask that you will be with them once again as they rehearse tomorrow night after a rehearsal last night. And we pray that their preparation for the nine lessons and carols on Sunday morning will go extremely smoothly and that this will be a wonderful service along with the 
the Watch Night Christmas Eve service and the Christmas morning service as well. So use our choir and our music to herald forth the good news of the season. And finally, we pray for those elderly members of our congregation who are sharing in our home communion services at this time. May these services be a source of blessing and encouragement to each one of them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers as we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples and us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As we go from this time of worship, may our lives be enriched by the journey of Mary and Joseph. Our hopes be expanded by those who watch for a star, and our longings be honored by a gracious God this Christmas season and even forevermore. Mm -hmm. 